Good morning, boys, and welcome back to the channel. If you're sick of golf hour content, I promise there's only like 30 or 40 more videos we're gonna stretch out of this thing. Just kidding. So, uh, everyone in the comments from the first video to the last video has been asking how much this costs. We're gonna get into that. It can get a little confusing, try to keep up, but I'm gonna go over what I have into mind and a more budget-friendly way of doing this, which there is out there. You know me and I can't go budget. So here's a Golf R. There's a limestone gray 2016 Golf R. It was a DSG car. It was all-wheel drive from the factory. That's another question that we get a lot. Can this be done to a GTI? It can, it's not cost-effective. You have to swap the floor pan from the all-wheel drive Golf R just to bolt up the rear subframe to house the rear end and axles and all that stuff. In my opinion, that cost difference probably outweighs the difference between a GTI and a Golf R, but that's up to you guys. So, 2016 limestone gray Golf R, 53,000 miles when I purchased it. I had two requirements. Has to have CarPlay, can't have a sunroof, and you'll notice we reached that and we got the CarPlay in there. Unfortunately, this is wired CarPlay because the car is 2016, um, and it is just a Volkswagen. Even the F80 though was wired CarPlay. Grant's car is a 2016, has wired CarPlay. Um, I went extra with the wheels and the coilovers. Those are the only two mods I've really done to the car. And you don't need to do them obviously. So once again, we'll go over what it cost me and what you could do it for. So when I got the car from the dealership in Virginia, it was $30,000 even. Um, that was all in gas, getting down there, I'm at like, $30,100 or something I think I have into the car and it's a really nice car there's no major dents dings scratches no paintwork um, this was owned by an older guy and I think he was in the military this car traveled to like Brussels or something something crazy but uh it's a really nice car it's perfect for what I wanted to do so I got the car for 30 then we went on the hunt for an RS3 our hunt ended at Copart, found one in California, and all in on the R3, which was a 12,000 mile 2017 R3, was with shipping about 34 grand. Shipping killed us, we fucking bought the car from California. It's kind of the worst move. Shipping almost cost four grand. So, um, I don't know if you can count that, but like I said, I'm gonna go into my car, and then we can discuss, discuss how you can save money. At this point, I was 64 grand into the two cars, okay? But there's uh, a light at the end of that tunnel. The parts you take out of the two cars that you don't need are worth quite a bit. With the Golf R and the uh, the RS3, we're 64 grand deep. Um, but like I said, there's light at the end of the tunnel. After removing all the stuff you don't need, the original Golf R drivetrain, um, the rear diff, the seats that I removed, the steering wheel, etc. Um, I've got Alex on the phone right now and we can ask him what the values of those parts are roughly. Um, my car only had 53,000 miles, so if you have a higher mileage car, it's probably worth a little less. If you have a lower mileage car, it could potentially be worth more. But to my understanding, Alex, the, the engine's worth about 4,500 bucks. It is correct, and that's without the transmission too. And the transmission is worth another 1,000 to 1,500 depending on how good the transmission is. So so you could be six grand into just the engine and transmission. What about the rear end, like the rear diff? The rear end sells for about a thousand bucks. Then you can sell the drive shaft for maybe 500, somewhere around there. Okay, so so we're 75 with rear end, drive shaft. Uh, what about the front? What did I get for my seats, front and rear? Uh, I believe it was $900. All right, so we'll round that one up to a thousand, so we're at 85. And then, uh, shit, what else was there? Is there anything else? The steering wheel, a lot of people wanted your steering wheel. What, did, what does that go for, like 500 bucks? Yeah, somewhere around there. So wherever we're at, I already lost track. I think we're at like nine grand just out of my Golf R, which makes my $30,000 Golf R roughly 20 grand. I mean, my front brakes, are probably worth a little bit of money. The rear brakes are probably worth a little bit of money. Um, probably, oh yeah, what about cats that you got out of the uh, the Golf R? The what? The catalytic converter. Oh, the cats, yeah. So you got about a thousand bucks back in cats. Okay, so, so right there, we're 20 grand into the Golf R at this point. 
um, which takes 10 grand off our total bill. And then the RS3 stuff that we ended up not needing. What do you, what do you roughly uh, call that stuff worth? Because we haven't sold it all yet, but there is quite a bit of money in that. So you used a lot of your stuff, which is, which you basically used as much as somebody could out of your car. Sure. And I think you'll still end up back with around 10 grand worth of stuff. Okay, so, so realistically, at that point, if we're back with 10 grand, um, after parting the two cars out, etc., that leaves us with a total of 20 grand out of the whole equation between the Golf R parts and the RS3 parts. We were 64 into that, so that bumps us down to 44. And then Alex's services, Innovative Motorsports services, start at 15 grand. And they can obviously go up from there. You could build a motor, you could do a bunch of custom fabrication. But if we if we factor in that 15 grand, we're only, and I don't wanna say only like it's a small amount, but we're only at 59 grand, which is a comparable RS3, right? Yeah, and that's buying two cars. That's, that's not even, you know what I mean? That's buying two full cars. Right. And and now, as far as I'm concerned, with the parts we removed from my car and replaced, subframes, suspension arms, brakes, all that, we had a 12,000 mile RS3 and a 53,000 mile Golf R. This Golf R, realistically, at this point, minus the wiring and all that nonsense that's inside the chassis, has 12,000 miles. All of the running gear, all of the drivetrain has been pretty much converted, right? Yeah, I mean, you can see in the video, that stuff was like pristine. Like, right. All the stuff that we put in the car looked brand new. It was crazy. And a 12,000-mile RS3, which is the only thing we can compare this to, is how much money? 70 grand, 65 grand at this point? I was looking at them, and you can't find one less than, like, 52. Yeah, they're still going for pretty much sticker used. Right, which so is crazy. You know, 65, 70, somewhere in that that ballpark with, with tasteful mods done to it. Even even at 55, we're only four grand over, and we have a car that's uh, three 350 pounds lighter, um, and in my opinion, looks better. Obviously, people will argue that. If we got the Sport back, I'll be honest, I probably wouldn't own the Golf R because I'd be perfectly fine with that wagon. I think it's a really cool car looking at the ones in the UK. But if you don't yeah. know people from the UK, the US never received a five-door RS3. We only got the sedan and we only got the TTRS. And TTRSs are even more money. So to get the, to get the performance aspect out of this engine, it can be an RS3, a TTRS, or now, thanks to Innovative Motorsports, a Golf R. And between those three options, I clearly chose the Golf R. Other people will say, you should have just bought an RS3, but I like, there's, there's a couple things I like about this car. One, I don't really care too much about the exterior. What I mean by that is, if something were to happen, if I were to get a rock chip or whatever, it wouldn't really bother me. A brand new RS3 or a $65,000 RS3, the value is really in the package. And uh, would like with any swap cars, if I crash this car, if someone were to vandalize, whatever happens to this car, I can just buy another Golf R and swap everything over. Granted, it would cost me a little bit of money. Um, the bulk of the work is done. I don't know, Alex has obviously never been, never been tasked with that job, but if this car were to get crashed, I doubt it would be 15 grand to redo, right, Alex? Most of it's in like the wiring no, and coding. No. Yeah, most of it's in the wiring, but it's it's the swap would be way easier because we made everything work already. Right. So at that point, um, you know, if we were to crash it, it's another 20 grand out of pocket, and it sucks. But if you crash your RS3, yeah. good luck finding a comparable RS3 in this market for for the same money, and then having to do all the work. You know, if you did if you did mods and stuff like that again. So. In my opinion, the Golf R is the best bang for the buck between the three cars. And then on top of that... Well, your car is... Also, your car is now worth more money than the Well, RS3, that's the right? question, right? That's the question that everyone's going to have is what is this car worth? I don't know. No one knows, right? Because none of them have been sold. I don't think I'd have a problem selling this car for $65,000. I think even a little more than that, to be completely honest with you. I think Possibly. it will go for more than an RS3. Possibly, but even even so, even if it just goes for sixty five, and what were we into it fifty nine before the wheels, yeah. before the coilovers? It's pretty good. There's not a lot of scenarios where you can modify a car and end up with more money or even equivalent money to when you started. So, 
like I said, if, if you're not into the Golf R or you, you were questioning why I did a Golf R instead of an RS3, obviously the swap isn't for you. If you are a Golf R guy and you think the Golf R is cool and you like that it's lighter and you like that it's a, a wolf in sheep's clothing and you like possibly, I don't know how this works, but probably cheaper insurance rates and things like that, um, this this is the car. This is It's the best daily I've ever owned, and I'm saying that on the record. It is one of the most fun cars I own. And the dual uh, usability of this, the dual purposeness of this car is is awesome. I can throw Anna the keys to this car and she could drive it. It's automatic. I mean, she could drive a manual. But it's automatic. She could put the kids in it. You could do anything that you can do with any other daily. It's not like it'll try to kill you. It's not like it's overly powerful. It's just a sick daily that happens to have 500 horsepower at this point. So, um, realistically now, Alex, this is the part of the, the, the speculation part of the video that I'm going to run my mouth and you really need to be on the phone to make sure I don't say anything wrong. This car could be done for cheaper. What I mean is like yesterday I found a Golf R for 20 grand. I paid 30 grand for this. So that's a $10,000 saving. Granted, I don't think you'll get the same money because I had 80,000 miles instead of 53. But e even so, if you can get two thirds of the money out of it, you're now at 12.5 for the chassis instead of 20, which is what I'm into it. Another or thing. You can blow a motor car. You can yeah. do the blown motor car as well. So, yeah, I do agree in that aspect. We can, uh, you can do it cheaper. And I, the market's also inflated right now for RS3s. So, you know, in the real world, the RS3 doesn't always go for that much money crash, but right. this is what it is right now in today's times. And, right. And I think that. once everything cools off, RS3s will settle somewhere between the 20 and 25 range crashed. Golf R's will, will be at the 20 to 25 range in good condition. Like, I paid 30 grand. This car, what was the MSRP on a 2016 Golf R in 2016? Uh, 38 or 40, 30, probably. 38, that yeah. Area. And yeah. with 50,000 miles, I you know I paid close to that. So once again, COVID prices are bullshit. But I think if you were able to save 10 grand on the chassis um, with finding one with a little higher mileage or maybe one not from a dealer or who knows, if you were to get lucky with an RS3 that your buddy crashed or that you saw on Facebook Marketplace someone didn't have insurance when they crashed it, a couple dollar savings there. Like there's ways, but in my opinion, just starting with a $20,000 car, bumps that number down 10 grand, which is is not out of the question. I saw one for 23, saw one for 20. I uh, We've seen blown up cars. I saw a blue blown up car for 15 grand. Granted that $15,000 car, you can't get the engine money out of, but hopefully the trans, the diff, the seats, all that stuff is still good. I think you could pull this off for sub 50 grand if you were able to just be patient and find hella deals. Obviously Alex's price doesn't change just because you got stuff cheaper, but at the end of the day, five grand somewhere is five grand off the top. One more thing I wanna add before we continue with this, I'm putting this somewhere in the video. If you already own the Golf R or you're financing the Golf R, this price, the 30,000 initial dollars that I spent cash on this gets deleted. I mean, you spend it at the end of the day, but a five or $600 monthly payment, um, is a lot easier to, to stomach than just dropping 30 grand. So if you are financing your car at whatever price you are, and you just were to add in the RS3 and the the labor from Innovative Motorsports, plus subtract the parts you don't need, you pretty much only need to come out of pocket the RS3 price because you're gonna get enough money out of the RS3 and out of the Golf R to pay Alex and his guys. And I think, uh, I mean, Alex, you know better than me. What does it cost to build a 500 horsepower Golf R with the original engine and have the six speed, which is the weaker transmission, the weaker rear diff, the smaller brakes, the shittier seats and steering wheel? What does it cost just to do 500 horsepower reliably in a two liter? Well, that's the whole thing. I think you just said the word there is reliability, right? You, you, you've been on the track with your car already and I never once thought, hey, he's gonna blow that thing up. Right. 500 horsepower in a four cylinder yeah, people have done it. It does last for a little while, but it's a ticking time bomb. And if you take a completely stock car, no mods done to it, add in your big turbo, your hybrid, your full frame, whatever it may be, you're pretty close to that price of the the RS3 that's crashed already. So, so you're you're getting into that territory. With that being said, yeah. I didn't go budget because we were kind of in a rush, right? Yeah, exactly. And the other point is is 
have you done anything to part this car out? Have you lifted a finger? Have you? No. You know. No. No. I have a lot but of people in the DMs. I had a lot of people in the DMs hitting me up about the motor and stuff. But um, if you are interested in any of the parts or anything. Hit up uh, Innovative Motorsports on Instagram. I mean, that's it. I'm going to give them there. You can send them wherever you want, but I think pushing people to the Instagram yeah. is the move. So hit them up on, it's just add in Innovative Motorsports, correct? Yeah, Innovative Motorsports. Yeah, and uh, they go, go there, and if you do do this and you do want to turn key swap, like Alex said, they'll part the car out for you. They'll take a percentage or just an hourly rate um, for that. It's hourly rate. Yeah, but it's it's... Who wants to deal with that? And these guys can pull these cars apart twice as fast as, five times as fast as anyone else out there. So, um, realistically, at 55 grand, well, I mean, I'm underestimating a little, 59 grand, this car blows my F80 out of the water, is more useful, um, and and just a, just a cooler daily. So, I'm gonna end the video there. That's all the information everyone needed. They were just asking about what it costs, and I wanted to get this out, uh, but, we're going to do a lot more with the Golf R. We might keep doing more things with the MQB chassis just in general or just the Daza engine in general. But I, I love this thing, and that's my that's my uh, final video for the series. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you don't follow Alex at Innovative Motorsports on YouTube or on Instagram, both links are in the description, and uh, you're going to see a lot more of these guys. We're going to start challenging some Golf R stuff to some Skyline stuff just to see, but to be fair... I've already considered selling some of my JDM cars and putting more money into uh, into the Euro world. So, I uh, hope you enjoy this. Hope this gave you all the info. Any questions you have, put in the comments or hit up Alex uh, directly at their Instagram or in their YouTube comments. And we'll see you guys next time.